Uh, my name is Jesse Riding, and I'll be tying a, a beadback scud uh, right now. It's actually a pattern developed by my mother, Rainy Riding. It's a simple uh, scud pattern that actually has built-in weight to it because the body is made out of uh, glass beads, and it's pretty simple to tie for anywhere between a beginner to an, an intermediate tire, uh, and it's a, it's a great pattern to fish. We start by using a, uh, a, a standard scud hook, and the scud hook uh, needs to be beaded on, so the first thing that I do is I just grip onto it with uh, a hackle plier or something like that so I can hold onto it. And um, in order to properly bead the, the, uh, the beads on there, you just have to crush the hook a little bit. Now, if you crush your, your barbs uh, anyways, you can crush it completely, but I usually just crush it just a little bit so it's a little bit there. Uh, the beads uh, that can be used are simple 11-aught uh, glass beads for sizes uh, uh, 12, 14, 16, and 18 if you wanted to tie a size 20 hook. Uh, you'd probably want to go down to a size 15 aught uh, glass bead. But once I've got the hook in this position, I simply just lick my finger in a, in a pile of glass beads and they kind of stick to it. And it's really simple then once, once you're in that position to just thread those on. Now we're going to be tying a size 14 today. And so I will, I'm intending on putting six glass beads on. The, the rule is, is, is basically you just want there to be some extra space there because you're going to, as you'll see, we're going to put some dubbing uh, in between each, each spot as well as to make room for a head and a little butt to butt up the, uh, the beads together with. So after I've got, let's see, we've, so far we've got one, two, three, four, five, one more. Once that bead is on there, then we're going to be good to go. And at this point I'm going to put it in, my, in, in the vise at a, at a slightly different angle because I'm going to uh, tie a thread uh, uh, dam there, if you will, or a, a big knob of, of thread um, so that the beads actually will come back and, and butt against it and won't want to slide off your hook. So some three-aught, or, or excuse me, some, uh, some six-aught or even smaller if you're going to use a, a smaller hook um, a thread and uh, complementary colors. I'm going to be tying uh, a kind of a light sulfur orange uh, right now. You can do this in olive or whatever color of, of, of scud you want to do. Uh, uh, when scuds die, they actually turn a kind of a, a reddish orange, and so this is going to imitate a, uh, a scud that is dead in the water but gets eaten just, just like the, the live ones. So, anyways, so I'm going to first start by tying on here, just like you would any place, but I'm going to start with this thread uh, ball that I'm going to create right towards the bend of the hook, trim off the excess thread. And I'm leaving a lot of space here because as this gets butted back down here and we put uh, um, dubbing in between each one, I want to make sure that there's room for a head. So it's pretty simple. So once that's there, then using a rotary vise, you can simply just turn it upside down and reposition because this fly is going to be tied upside down like that. This is also one of those good things. I don't know, uh, to, to, for fly tying, I found that uh, having fingernails actually helps you with a lot of things. And this is one of those that if you didn't have, if your fingernails were, were too short, it would kind of be a little bit difficult. So the first thing you do is once you've got that, that butt, you're going to just come, come across the, the, the backside and you're just going to butt and pull that, that first bead as, as tight as you can against it. And you're just going to simply make a wrap over the top of it and then anchor. And so now we're actually in that first segment, if you will. This is the next part is done by simply just taking some some dubbing that, that's a matching color, complementary color to it, and just pulling off a little bit like this. This is actually this dubbing is is kind of my own blend. It's a uh, or a blend that we use at the uh, at Rainey's, and it's a, a simply uh, a, a yarn with a little bit of antron, so it's got a little bit of sparkle to it. Anyways, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just twist that. It's it's been cut into little half inch pieces before it was blended, so you can make what we call little dreadlocks of it. And that's simply, you just lay that on like you would any, any material in that, that spot, and you secure it. Two thread wraps is all you need. You can pull that up, and you slide the next bead down on top of it like that. Thread up, over the next, part, the next segment, wrap a couple of spots for anchor. And then you repeat likewise. Just get a little bit of dubbing, make it, roll it into a little dreadlock. You don't want too much or too little. You want just the perfect amount, and with a little bit of experimentation, you'll be able to do it. And this is going to, each one is going to going to put uh, dubbing in each each one of these uh, segments uh, to imitate the uh, the legs that come down from a from a from a scud. Here's the next dreadlock piece. 
pulling up really hard, butted the next uh, bead down, keeping them tight butted next to each other as I anchor each one. So that they're really tight next to each other down against that, that, that nub, that, that big ball of thread that we create initially. Here's the next one. Pull up. Put that thread bead down tight against it. We're in our last segment now. Roll that next thread lock together, put it on the vise or on that, that segment. Two thread wraps is all you need. You pull the two together really tight, slide the next bead down. And now we're ready to form our head. At this point, we just go back to the same thing we're doing. I ro ro rotate my vise back to, to its normal position, reposition the hook so I can see the hook, build up the thread just a little bit, and I'm going to end with a whip finish at this point. Pull tight, trim off the thread. And then I'm going to reposition this just in this position so I can see it really good. Now I'm going to use a tool that, I, that, that uh, you can get just at a but beautician supply. And what it is, is is just a mustache comb. However, I never figured out why this would be a good mustache comb because the, the, it's pointed and the, uh, the, the, the actual the, the, the tongs on it are actually made out of metal, so it would, would really hurt. But it works perfectly uh, to comb out dubbing. And so I simply just use that to make that dubby nice and combed out perfectly like that. And we're at this point, we're done. So I take it out of the vise, I take my scissors, and I just trim off right with the bend of the, with the gap of the hook, like so. And that fly is finished with just one exception, and that would be just to add a dab of, of uh, head cement right back on that thread ball so that it's secure at all times. Again, this fly is, is, is really easy uh, to, to tie. It's built in weight with the, with the uh, glass beads and, uh, and pretty simple for, for just about every person that uh, would want to tie. And there's a touch of realism because you have this auto automatic uh, segment, segmented look to the, to the fly. Um, and again, you can tie it in many different colors, olive, pink, whatever you want.